this just in. Faith Church of the Nazarene is scheduled to return from deployment and in the building on June 7th. There will be two services. The first will start at 8.45 a.m. and the second will start at 10.45 a.m. Let's go over some guidelines for when we meet. As you come into the building, remember to keep six feet apart. Also, perhaps there's a better way of doing our greetings. We highly encourage you to wear a mask. Take a quick look at the proper ways of wearing masks. Each row of the pews will be exclusive to families. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you get your own row. If you are sick in any way, please stay home and check us out on our live stream on Facebook, YouTube, or our very own website. We will work hard to ensure the building stays sanitized for each gathering.
Good morning, y'all, and welcome to our live stream here at Faith Church. Um, these times have been really crazy, and this year has not gone the way any of us planned. Um, but I'm thankful that God's plan is still unfolding, and we can see his purposes, um, you know, taking place in our lives. And I'm thankful that we don't have to be afraid in these times, that we can stand in his love. Uh, 1 John 4, 8 tells us that perfect love casts out fear and that we don't have to be afraid. So I invite you to worship with us this morning and um, to stand in his love. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy what Emmy says uh, said at the beginning here we are very thankful that you guys are here and we are standing in God's love in the midst of, uh, of a place that you would think that fear would come but the church stands here today confident that God has everything in control and we can stand firmly in his love you know there's a certain splendor to God he's in, he's he's incredible um, this, this next song talks about that. It talks about him being clothed in majesty. Um, let all the earth rejoice um, with what God has done uh, in sending his son, what he has done in just his creative majesty. And um, I want you guys to join us with us, join with us now as we sing um, How Great Is Our God. The splendor of Let all the earth rejoice, all 
God, thank you so much uh, for being here today. And um, at times we feel like um, we have an obstructed view of your plan, Lord. Perhaps there's a tapestry going on, and we're behind it, and all we see is the the um, all the pieces of thread that are just hanging everywhere, and we we can't see the picture because we're behind it. And you're on the other side of it, just crafting this wonderful, wonderful tapestry, Lord. And 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 we know that you're doing that right now, Lord. And while we don't have that perspective, I thank you so much. Thank you so much that we can have the confidence that that's what exactly what you're doing, that you have a wonderful plan for us, Lord, and a plan for this church, a plan for the church as a whole, for, for Christians through the midst of this COVID-19. I know, Lord, that you are in control, and you're here to watch out for us, to protect us, and to spread the joy of your gospel in the midst of all of this, Lord. That you, your, your healing power is, is the most important message right now, Lord, and I pray that you would just um, uh, give us your power, fill us with your spirit, that we could spread this awesome good news everywhere, Lord. Um, some would think that we would be held back by this, Lord, by, by this, but here at, as a church, we're here online, and we know we're reaching a lot of people, Lord, and I know that you have the power to reach through all that. We don't, we don't have to be uh, physically with people for you to reach them. We can reach them just like this, and, and Lord, we know that you can work through us in this, and I pray that you would do that, Lord, that... You would give us your power, and you um, would spread the good news and just open the ears of those that are listening, Lord, that they would be transformed, that they would come to know you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 
The next song that we're going to sing invites us to just shout out uh, to God. And the, the first verse starts off with men of, men of faith. And so I'd like to do is, if you're a man if, uh, at home, I'd like you to sing that verse with me. Uh, the first verse is, is for the men. And then uh, we're going to sing a chorus, and there's going to be the second um, verse. And when that comes, I'd like for the women to sing with Andrea and Emmy here. So, um, but the rest of the song we'll all sing together. Uh, the third verse talks about the church, and uh, we're going to come together in that third verse and sing that one together. So would you sing this song with us, uh, Shout to the North? up and sing of the great and glorious King. You are strong when you feel weak in your darkness complete. Shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west, Jesus the Savior to all. Lord of heaven and earth. Rise up, women of the truth. Stand and sing to broken hearts. Who can know the healing power of our awesome King of love? We will shout to the north and the south. Sing to the I want to thank you guys again for joining us for this worship. Um, we're just so thankful that you're able to join us. And I just want to remind everybody that here in two weeks, um, is, if everything goes right with the way that this is progressing, we're going to have an outdoor service right out here on our property. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be the Penteco uh, Pentecost picnic on the day of Pentecost. We're going we're gonna to have a service. Bring out your own food, and um, we'll keep our social distancing. And We'll just uh, be so excited to see everybody uh, for that celebration, and we want just to invite you guys out on the day of Pentecost here uh, two weeks from now on Sunday. And uh, now I'd just like to welcome Pastor Pastor Bill up. He's going to deliver a message today, and I just want you guys to open up your minds, open up your hearts. Uh, let, let the Holy Spirit uh, speak to you through Pastor Bill today, and, um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you. Well, good morning. Do you ever have to wait? How do you like doing it? Do you like to wait? Uh, I usually don't, but I, I should be good at it. I don't think I am. It, it certainly took us long enough to get into this building, and now a year later, we're not even meeting in it because of COVID-19. 
But uh, at least I'm here today, so I look forward to seeing uh, you when we can get back in here. But uh, waiting, we're also waiting for that stay-at-home order to lift completely. I know we're able to do a little bit more, get out uh, a little bit more, more businesses are opening up, but it's not back to normal yet. And in fact, uh, I see people waiting in line six feet apart, hopefully six feet apart, in order to get into stores, uh, you know, all around town, any business. Sometimes people having to wait in line even just to try to find essentials like, you know, toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Well, you ever, have you ever had an experience like this where you felt like life has put you in a waiting room? Uh, I read from, uh, from uh, Max Lucado, a great author, who described it this way. He kind of uses uh, the image of the waiting room in the doctor's office to describe life at times. Here's what he said. So, so here I sit in the waiting room. The receptionist took my name, recorded my insurance data, and pointed me to a chair. It said, please have a seat. We'll call you when the doctor is ready. And I look around. There's a mom holding a sleeping baby, a fellow dressed in a suit, thumbing through Time magazine. A woman with a newspaper looks at her watch, sighs, and continues the task of the hour, waiting. The waiting room. It's, it's not the examination room. That's, that's down the hall. Not the consultation room, that's on the other side of the wall. Not the treatment room, exams, consultations, and treatments all come later. The task at hand is the name of the room, the waiting room. We in the waiting room understand our assignment to wait. We don't treat each other. I don't ask the nurse for a stethoscope or a blood pressure cuff. I don't, I don't pull up a chair next to the woman with the newspaper and say, tell me what prescriptions you're taking. That's the job of the nurse. My job is just to wait. So I do. I can't say I like it. Time moves like an Alaskan glacier. The clock ticks every five minutes, not every second. Somebody presses the pause button, life in slow-mo. Well, can you resonate with what Max Licato wrote? Have you ever felt like maybe even God was condemning you to wait? Have you ever asked God for something and felt like, is God answering it all? Uh, well, somebody once said that God always answers prayer, but the answer might be yes or no, or wait a while, or perhaps God saying, I've got something even better for you. But I have to admit that I, I don't like the wait a while answer that God sometimes gives. Well, what's the hardest part about waiting for you? Would you just take a moment and post a comment on the, the feed here, and I'll wait. Well, I don't know if that felt like a long time to you or not, but um, it reminded me of a doctor who said that many of us have the hurry disease. If you want to know if you have it or not, uh, have somebody blindfold you and then have a uh, timer and uh, count off one minute and you tell them when you think that minute is over. Uh, a lot of people, if you, ha well, if you have the hurry disease, you'll probably be calling a minute in like 15 seconds. <laughs> well, since Easter Sunday, we've been talking about resurrection living, how to live in the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Think about it this way. If Jesus died for us and then rose from the dead, how should we be living? So to help us think about that, let's, let's see what Jesus said to his disciples in Luke chapter 24. We're going to read from verses 44 to 52. Listen to what is said here. Then he, Jesus said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and 
rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. And now I send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Then Jesus led them to Bethany, and lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshipped him and then returned to Jerusalem, filled with great joy. Well, in this passage, we're reminded that sometimes resurrection living includes waiting. Waiting, <laughs> that's a tough thing to do. When, when God asks you to wait, then how do you spend the time in waiting? Are you listening for God or what maybe a lot of us tend to do, we seek distraction from the waiting. Well, you may remember from the life of uh, the prophet Elijah in the Old Testament in 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah was listening for the voice of God, and the, the chapter kind of reveals to us that sometimes the voice of God comes in that still, small voice, and the story kind of implies that you're going to have to be quiet in order to hear the voice of God at times. And so we are called sometimes to seek times of quiet in order to listen for what God wants to say to us. In those times of quiet, is it possible, times of waiting, to kind of carve out some times of quiet in those times of waiting? Uh, some time ago, somebody challenged me with the uh, one, one, one challenge. Their challenge was for one hour a day to take a break from your screens whether that's small or large, take one hour a day break from social media. One hour a day, and then the 111 comes in, one hour a day, one day a week, and then one week a year without screens, without social media. How's that for being quiet, perhaps? Well, in this chapter, Luke 24, the disciples have spent some time worshiping and praising God after Jesus uh, uh, ascends back into heaven. We find out that they spend time praying in the temple. And later on in Acts chapter 2, we find them in the upper room praying and worshiping and waiting. So they spent their waiting time worshiping, praising, praying. How are we spending our waiting times in these stay-at-home times? Uh, the challenge I want to share with you today is to don't waste the waiting. And let me suggest there's three things to think about while we are waiting. Well, did you know that your reactions to situations in life can re reveal opportunities for growth in you during this waiting time? In the time of waiting, take time to think about how you react to situations and what your attitude is. Uh, let me tell you an old story that I heard about that kind of fits here. Uh, there was a monk who um, had the struggle with impatience. The more he tried, it seemed like the more he tried to be patient, the more impatient he became. So he decided that in order to uh, really learn to be patient, he needed to get away by himself. And so he went out and built himself a little home deep in the woods, far away from civilization. Well, years later, there was a man traveling in those woods and ran into this, uh, this house and the monk that lived there. And the man was amazed to find that anyone was living out so far away from the rest of the world and so he asked the monk why he was there all by himself. And the monk told him that he was there in order to learn how to be patient. Well, the traveler asked then how long he had been there. And the monk said, I've been here seven years. The traveler was stunned and said, well, if, if there's no one around to bother you, how will you know when you're patient? Well, annoyed, the monk replied, would you, would you get out of here? I don't have time for this. Perhaps he still needed some time to, to work on that attitude. Well, have you heard uh, perhaps some of the folks in the public health uh, in our communities express concern that during these stay-at-home orders, it might also be a, a rise in spouse abuse? Those kind of issues are re a reality that folks have to deal with. In our time of waiting, are our attitudes getting better or worse? Have you found yourself more impatient or angry in these days? Could it be that these attitudes are symptoms of deeper issues like pride deep down within. Do you get angry or irritated when others enjoy good fortune and you see other people's lives on, on the social media? They get to do in other states stuff we can't do here. 
Could it be that those attitudes of, of greed uh, perhaps are fed by greed or envy? Maybe if you feel that you're stuck and you're waiting for what you yet need or want, maybe it's a time for you to examine your own heart and ask yourself, if I'm losing my joy, maybe I need to ask myself why. Has my pride been stepped on or my preferences ignored? Is that why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling? Well, do you have work to do on your attitudes while you're waiting? Do I? I? I probably do. How about you? So how are we doing in the waiting? Let's don't waste the waiting. Well, there's another question that we might get asked, not only about our attitudes, how our attitudes are during this time of waiting, but also perhaps about relationships. Uh, I read something from uh, Pastor Tony Evans who talked about waiting in a sermon that he entitled, Waiting Well. Here's what he said. He said, the real problem isn't the waiting it's what happens in our hearts while we wait. He said, for too many of us, waiting creates a downward spiral of impatience, frustration, selfishness, and anger in our hearts. While we're waiting in line, we find flaws in the people around us and in front of us. And if this is how we respond to other people, what happens in our hearts when God makes us wait? So think about that. Our attitudes, we just challenged ourselves about that, but how do our attitudes then affect other people? during this time of waiting. Well, during their time of waiting, the apostles decided to do something uh, positive, and uh, one of the things they decided to do was to find someone to take Judas's place among the apostles. And they decided to draw lots to decide. They narrowed it down to two candidates, and they then decided they would draw lots to figure out which of them uh, was to take Judas's place. And they looked at this as a way to turn the decision over to God rather than encouraging others to jockey for position as Actually, they had done before Jesus' crucifixion, hadn't, hadn't they? They were trying to figure out who was going to have the best seats of honor in Jesus' coming kingdom. Well, maybe they were using this waiting time to implement some of what they had learned in this process. Because you remember, the disciples had had conflicts between them back before Jesus' uh, crucifixion and uh, resurrection and ascension. They argued about who was to be number one. They had bad attitudes towards some of those that they thought were seeking positions of influence and power. But now, after Jesus' ascension, it seemed like maybe the disciples had begun to deal with those issues and work through them and put them aside and maybe even forgive each other for wanting to seek a place ahead of each other. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, uh, one translation reads, they were all with one accord in one place. All with one accord, not meaning the, the car, the, the Honda model, automobile. They were they were all together. They were in unity in one place. It kind of implies a renewed level of togetherness. Now, maybe that's straining the text a bit, but you have to admit that when they're talking about the apostles and the disciples in the upper room, one thing is glaringly missing that you might have expected to show up. There's no report of the disciples arguing. And we know the gospel writers didn't have any qualms about recording their arguments before, so we can assume that they had maybe put those quarrels to rest in light of the overwhelming message of the resurrection. They had seen Jesus arrested, tortured, crucified, and buried, and then resurrected. Perhaps in light of that, their previous squabbles didn't make much sense anymore. Well, Jesus calls us to deal with those struggles and difficulties in relationships as well. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24, Jesus tells his followers to bring their gifts to the altar. But he says there, if you there remember that a, a brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there at the altar and go and be reconciled to that, that other person and then return and offer your gift. He kind of implies in saying that that you really aren't ready to worship God until the problems in your relationship with other people are resolved to the extent at least that it's up to you. So during this time of waiting, maybe it's a good time to ask the question, are there any problems in relationships between you and other people that you need to resolve? Now may be the time before Christ returns to resolve them. So remember, don't waste the waiting. Well, Jesus also challenges his disciples with a command that challenges them to determine where is their true allegiance? Whom are they really going to follow? Are they going to follow Jesus or follow their own decision, their own ideas? 
Well, Jesus tells his disciples in the passage uh, that we read and we showed on the screen there for them to stay in Jerusalem. But think about that. That's exactly where they had arrested, tortured, and crucified Jesus. Why would the disciples want to stay where they had killed Jesus? Wouldn't it be safer for them to head out into the world? And by the way, hadn't Jesus already told them that they should take the gospel into the whole world? Shouldn't they just say, well, Lord, you know, we don't really have to go back to Jerusalem right now and stay there. We, we should go ahead and head on out into the world. Shouldn't they take the message to the world already? But really, this was a, a significant issue was because the question would be, who is really in charge? Whom are the disciples really going to follow? Are they going to do what Jesus says, or are they going to do what they want? It asks us the same question, who is in charge in our life? What is our true allegiance in life? The question the disciples face, would they obey Jesus or follow their own preferences, their own set of ideas as, what, as to what was best to do, is the same challenge we face. Well, Luke records Jesus' words in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, when he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. You see, Jesus had challenged his disciples that they need to follow him, not their own way. And the fact that the disciples stayed in Jerusalem, admittedly, though they were behind locked doors much of the time, indicates that they had made a conscious decision to choose obedience to Jesus over following their own way. They decided to do what Jesus said in spite of their fear, perhaps, of what might happen to them in Jerusalem. But in so doing, they were acknowledging that Jesus was their master, their, lead, their leader, and their Lord. The decision to obey Jesus and remain when you would rather run or to stay when you'd rather make yourself scarce is an indication that faith is in control, not fear. So when you're tempted to wander off, don't. Make Jesus Lord of all of your life. When Jesus calls for you to wait on Him, put Him first. In this time of waiting, don't waste the waiting. Make a decision to who you are really following. Well, we too are waiting. Yeah, all of us are waiting for this pandemic to end and praying that it will. But we are also waiting for Jesus to return again just as His disciples were. Well, you remember after Jesus went into heaven, two angels appeared to the disciples, and in Acts chapter 1, verse 11, we hear what they said. Men of Galilee, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday He will return from heaven in the same way you saw Him go. Jesus had earlier told His disciples a parable in which a king called His servants to do the work He had told them to do, quote, until I return, found in Luke 19, 13. These, these workers were told to keep busy until He came back, doing what He had told them to do until He returns. And I think really Jesus told that parable for us to hear and to live out after He left and went back into heaven with the promise that He would return. We have work to do while we're waiting. Well, what is that work? Well, we may have some work to do in the areas we talked about. Uh, do I need to work on my attitudes? Do you? Am I on good terms with the people in my life? Are you? Or is there some repair work to be done? Are we taking advantage of the time we have? Is my relationship with Jesus what it could be or should be? How about you? Am I spending time with Him, listening to what He has to say to me, doing everything He's showing me to do? Or am I just filling the waiting time with distractions? Let me challenge you. Don't waste the waiting. Frederick Buckner wrote, To wait for Christ to come in His fullness is above all else to act in Christ's stead as fully as we know how. To wait for Christ is, as best we can, to be Christ to those who need us to be Christ to them most and to bring them the most we have of Christ's healing and hope because unless we bring it, it may never be brought at all. So let's not waste the waiting. Would you join me in prayer this morning? Lord, would you help us in this time not to waste the waiting times that you've given us? Father, help us to consider are there attitudes in our lives that need to be changed and do we see where they're coming from and surrender those uh, deeper needs to you? 
Lord, help us to consider the things that interfere with our joy and consider whether those are attitudes that we need to yield to you and ask for you to help us to overcome. And Father, in those relationships that we have in our lives, Father, sometimes in times of stress, it's even harder for us to live in relationships at, uh, at peace with others and uh, positive relationships like they need to be. So we pray that you would help us in this time of waiting to be able to deal with those frustrations, to turn them over to you instead of taking them out on the people around us. And Father, may we, during this time, find that our, our families are coming closer together than ever before, that we are get uh, uh, more of your love lived out in our lives. And Father, we pray as well that you would help us to consider the work that you have given us to do, and that we would put you first, acknowledging you as our Lord and Master, that our, indeed our ultimate instructions come from you, and that we must follow what you have said to us. So, Father, in and all this, we pray that you would guide us, draw us closer to you. And, Father, in this time of waiting, may we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Lord, even as we think about in our church calendar the, the coming of Pentecost Sunday, help us to remember, Lord, you still want to pour out your Spirit on our hearts and lives. And we pray, Lord, that we would prepare our hearts for that outpouring, that we would prepare our lives for you to come and live in us fully. So, Father, if there's anything in our life that, that is not compatible with you living in every part of our life, we pray, Lord, that we'd be willing to turn that over to you so that our hearts would be ready for you to come and live in us fully. Father, prepare us. Help us not to waste this waiting time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning. We appreciate uh, your taking the time to be with us. Let me encourage you to take the next step. If uh, you've heard the, the message that uh, has been shared today and the Lord has spoken to you and, and uh, feel like that the Lord wants, is wanting you to take that next step, let me encourage you to join one of our online small groups to learn more about Jesus and even to find friendship and support during these unprecedented days. We're going to be working together to help, help each other uh, draw closer to Christ and not waste the time of waiting that we, that we have. Uh, also, don't forget, uh, coming up, weather permitting, uh, May the 31st, we're going to join together here at our location for a Pentecost praise and a picnic. We're going to try to plan to have an outdoor service at 1045 with physically distant picnic following. Uh, I encourage you to bring your own picnic lunch, pack a cooler, or plan to tailgate with us. It'll give us a chance to uh, at least, you know, kind of holler at each other at, over a distance, but able to see each other and to rejoice while loving our neighbor by keeping a safe distance apart. Uh, then planning for the, the following week, the first Sunday in June, uh, to have uh, double services here at the sanctuary. Uh, some of the seats will be uh, blocked off, so we keep our distance apart from each other. Two services to make it convenient, also with the re reduction in uh, capacity, makes it easier for us to uh, keep social distance but still have a, a meeting here. Lord willing, if the governor opens things up as scheduled, perhaps, uh, we'll be able to be in uh, here the first Sunday in June. We well, encourage you to visit our website. That's jaxnaz.org, J-A-X-N-A-Z.org, for information about our online small group meetings as well as our schedule of services. And any changes that we have to make to our schedule will be posted on the blog page there at jaxnaz.org. And please let us know if there's some way that we can serve you or pray for you during this time. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, we encourage you to text them to me or call or email me uh, with those requests, and we will join together with you. If you want them shared with our prayer team, uh, please let us know that so that we can share that uh, with those who will commit to pray with you for the needs that you're facing. Well, let me close our service today with the words of the Apostle Paul that's found in his first letter to the Thessalonians in chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. He says, May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, as we do for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. May God bless you and uh, continue to work through you as we don't waste the waiting. God bless you.